No comment. This okay. meeting is being recorded. All right. Do we have a like an agenda thing? Yeah. Oh, there's a bunch of them right here. Oh, yeah. oh you're sorry. Oh, here. Here. All right, then public comments closed. Select board reports. Sue? Oh, I know first time. <laughs> um, so I, I just read um, you discussed the speeding, sign, flashing sign, and the board came in today. All right, so I'm hoping that it will be fairly quick. As long as that's actually the problem, but it's yeah. been gone over with the tech support people, and okay. you know, so we're pretty sure. And you can actually see a burn mark on that top light board, so okay. pretty confident. So we're thinking maybe in the next week or two. Oh, I'm hoping within the next day or two. But like tomorrow good. would be awesome. That would be good because yeah. the, the UPS guy brought it here. I'm like, you got anything for my house? Take this right to me. So, <laughs> so, anyway. good. good. Hopefully. Do we want to put it in the same place? Or do you want to put it in a new place? We could always just put it there. Well, somebody had suggested it moving up more towards yeah. the Blanchard Road. Yeah. Um, I think it might be helpful to slow traffic coming down the long I, hill. I think. Before you, the, yeah, because yeah. you do, you know, you, you pretty fast coming into town there. And if it was just maybe, I don't know, before or after that turn? I would say past Blanchard Road headed. Out of town, yep. but obviously on the incoming. So yeah, kind of like yeah. Um, right around Hebron Heights ish. Yeah, like maybe down the hill a little bit from their driveway. Yeah, from their driveway. Right. How easy is it going to be to move that thing around? I well, not very. Um, I, Steve wasn't very happy with me once he had it up, and I asked him to please take it back down. And he was wondering, well, can you just come fix it on the pole? <laughs> <laughs> And so <laughs> right now it's actually mounted on my garage. Um, but it will be some kind of hole. I've all right, right. It's on a bracket, right? There's a bracket hanging. There it is. But so we would just have to move that. An electrical hookup? Or? No, it's not solar. solar. Right. Well, I guess for the time being, we just park it back where it is. Yeah. Because it's better than nothing, but yeah. then look at the possibility of relocating it. It would be nice if it could be moved around town. Maybe we could but put it on some kind we of. We could build something. Yeah. Yeah. We actually need one on that side of town, too. Well, and that was why I mentioned last time. Well, what I know do they that cost? the road is. You know, they do have there. a. Um, we bought it before. State has one that's a portable one. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yep. That you, I'm not sure how that works. Each town has a certain amount of time to use it. So maybe we could borrow so it. Could get that one. You know, if they wanted to have a portable one, you know, like this weekend probably would have been a good time for it. That actually, um, the deadline is passed for that. You have to sign up because they have limited yeah. ones, and I believe it's a two week limit that yeah. you get to, to yeah. borrow it. Um, oh, really? Huh. Yeah. But it's an annual sign up. So we're. Uh, yeah, I think yeah. so. So we, we might be able to, to get it for next year for, and if we pick our preferred dates. Mm -hmm. maybe. Yeah. Cool. Let's do that. Um, so that was that was my first one. <laughs> do we want to see about making it portable, like for the now, or do we want to just put it up where it's been and then figure it out later what to do? Let's say okay, just get the stuff up there yeah. for now. Because mm -hmm. we have to buy the equipment to make it portable, right? And that would could take time. Or make something. Well, I mean, could something it? like that wouldn't be. I would Should we look to see far. how easy it is to move up to by Hebron Hicks? Yeah, I was gonna say like could mm -hmm. could Steve put a new post in <laughs> tomorrow. Is that, is um, tomorrow, I'm not sure what his plan is for tomorrow. Um, maybe, but maybe he could. If he can, let's put it up there. And if not, let's just get it up. Okay. So leave it up to see as to whether it's a four hour job or a four day job. <laughs> I'm sure four days is too much. <laughs> so, I would say that I remember right putting that post in, and that go down. Three feet. Yeah, it was that, quite a job digging that it's out. It's pretty heavy, so um, it would need. Just a post, but probably get maybe. I noticed Adam's got his little excavator right over at Lily's. 
might be able to get him to go up and dig the hole. We can put it up real quick. Yeah. Let's, let's see if somebody could get up there. But the most important thing is just that it's up first. Yeah. 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 Yes. yeah. Um, I I meant to take a look, but then it's been in several mm -hmm. weeks. So I had heard that the, the ladder was still on off of the beach float. And uh, you're out. Of, you're out. Of, I'm out of the way. <laughs> yeah, and then more stuff back. Yeah. And it was put back and it was chained. Okay. And um because I saw I just signed things for nuts and bolts to for the Yeah, and, and the so then we put it back and it's it's apparently the dock itself is in pretty rough shape, so it's it's hard to, to mm -hmm. mount it. Properly. Yeah, I went out and looked for like the dock in the water to look at it today because I wanted to see for myself and where the ladder was mounted. It looks like it's been fixed several, several times. And so like where the plastic meets the bolts is all broken. Mm -hmm. So like they literally just pull right up out of it. Right. And mm -hmm. then they have like some silicone stuff all trying to make it work, but it just it seems like a safety hazard. Then. Well, yeah, yeah we're, and we're pulling the dock. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So it's, it's was not, the dock vandalized recently? Did I no, it's that? just old. It's old, okay. and the, the I guess it's plastic, and it's very brittle from yeah. being out in the sun and the mm -hmm. weather. So mm -hmm. then they chained the ladder, so at least it didn't fall to the bottom of the lake, oh. and then put it back a couple times, and then I don't know. We're assuming it's on the bottom of the lake, but the whole raft was gone and everything last night when I went by, and I'm like. And then this morning it was by the beach and Sue Hoogler had pulled it from wherever she found it when she was out swimming. Oh, my God. oh Sue yeah. pulled it in? Yeah. Well, then now it's chained to a tree. Oh, okay. Well, it sounds like we need to budget for a new... Yeah, so I'm going to look at that anyway. Okay. As long as nobody gets, gets hurt trying to get on the right, ladder and right. falls, right? Right, because I mean, if you put any weight on it, if it's just falling off anyways, and then yeah. you get on it and it comes right up, then... Right. That's a whole other mm -hmm. situation. Maybe we have some contingency money for this year, depending on how much it is. Yeah. To replace the thing, and if it's too much, yeah, put it I, in for next year. But yeah, and there might be something in. I know there's like the beach fund, depending on how much things are. Maybe mm -hmm. get a price and see what it would cost to get a whole new unit. Right. Mm -hmm. it, there should be something there that's. Useful. It would be nice. We still have half the summer. To right. Go through. Yes. right. Um, and my third last one was, <laughs> um, thank you, Steve, for the moving the 35 mile an hour um, sign on North Guilford Road so that it slows people down coming into Monson. Um, well, but I know. Let me correct that. <laughs> <laughs> the sign has down. been moved. But they're not. There's no out. real change in. Time. I know. I know. Yeah. I said that kind of facetiously. Yeah. But going out of town on North Guilford Road, I realized there's the 35 mile an hour sign. Where is it? Somewhere before the cemetery, or just the after the residential. Yeah. But then it doesn't change to 45 after the houses. So I think people are. I don't know. I don't know if it's a big deal or not, but. The rest of the road to 150 is 45. Yeah. I there should be a 45 opposite the 35 sign. So Correct. We'll know that section. Yeah. 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 Because yeah. otherwise, I don't know if that makes a big deal. Maybe people. Steve could find a 45 mile an hour sign. Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> Two steps back. Thank you, Sue. All right, I do have a bit of a list. Um, to start with, I'm jumping the gun a little bit because this is sort of bicentennial, but it's also a town months and masks and a contention of people on August 20th. Eight to as many as a dozen people, which is great. They're staying in um, Greenville. They wanted hotel rooms, which we don't have any of. I didn't like the idea of hostels. <laughs> Said that that's what we had in town. Um, they are spending money to get up here. And I'm thinking it would be nice if we had some sort of welcoming event or some event on Saturday, either Friday night or Saturday, mm -hmm. um, town to town. That means yeah. us and them. Yeah. And I just thought I'd throw that out and see what people thought and what we might be able to come up with. 
When, when is this? August 20. They'll be arriving on the 19th, mm -hmm. on the Friday. They'll be here um, mid to late afternoon on Friday the 19th. And my initial thought was something on Friday night. Yeah, yeah. Which is great, except they're taking a bus here. They need transport back and forth. Mm -hmm. And Montanart's van will be able to transport them. I worked that out with Sean Oh, okay. I didn't know they had a van. <laughs> nice van. Yeah. But we would have to have probably Chantal or Jamie or somebody drive back and forth Friday and Saturday. So then I started thinking, do we go up there on Friday night? Do we do something on Saturday here? Do you know where you're staying? Really yes. Um, Moose Mountain in, I want to say, over Greenville Junction. Or the yeah, that's the most mountain in. Yeah. Do I have the name right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So if we're up for it, I'd be happy to look at some possibilities if, if ideas can be shared about what you all think might be a nice thing. I was thinking something low key, you know, a like cookout by the lake, but mm -hmm. yeah. where, who, you know, when. Anything we could have cater that would be. Mm -hmm. Oh, maybe we should talk to Cassie. Mm -hmm. She might be able to do something. So should I look into this? It sounds like we're yeah. in favor yeah, of it. Right. Yeah. It would be nice if we could do it in town here. It yeah. would be, yes. All right, why don't I talk to Cassie? And so see. are you thinking for Friday night or Saturday night? Either. Okay. Why, do you have plans on Friday night? <laughs> Technically, yes, though that is my honeymoon weekend. I'm driving <laughs> back up for Saturday's event. a lot of nerve. I know. Okay. My husband's like, why are you making a plan event for New Year? And I'm like, no, oh, well, it's their bad denial. They only plan it once every 200, so they win. All right, you, you're off the hook there. So, Friday so night, but Saturday morning, I will be up here. Maybe shoot for Saturday, and maybe we could do like, we could a, do like a happy hour or something, something real small on Friday, yeah. and then. Or we could go up there, is the other thing. Possibly. On um, Greenville and meet them on Friday. And I don't know, give it some thought. Yeah, see, see what. Yeah. What time do things start on Saturday? 10? I had 10. Oh, good grief. I don't even know what time the parade is. Well, we got the parade, right? Yeah. The I, parade is, I think, I want to say it's probably 10. Yeah. Okay. And it's going to be a biggie. It's going to be a big parade. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Nobody traveling through Monson will be happy that day mm -hmm. because be they won't the be traveling. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so let me work on that, that and I'll better. I'll communicate um, to you guys, I guess, what I'm coming up with and we can share. All right, great. Um, so you had brought up ATV road use guidelines is something we ought to be attending to. Yeah. And that doesn't seem to be on our radar as yet, but it probably ought to be just so we're proactive. Yeah, last year. We, we talk about it and, and um, I just, we kind of left that we would investigate and we we're hoping the state was going to come out with some, or the legislature with some kind of guidelines or something, um, but I haven't heard anything. And I just didn't want to lose sight of that because you know, it just seems to be, you know, we're going to get another request and I just feel like we should have some objective criteria, you know, with, did, did you mention that some towns had this already committed to paper Someone that we could use as a guideline? Said, I thought I recalled that, but I really mixed it up. No, is it really not the DOJ yes. guys mentioned it. Yes, that's right. And that would be something yeah. to look at. And I didn't know if you had started doing that. I hadn't. I would like to. <laughs> You are the chair of the policy committee. There you go. Really? <laughs> so, a lot has happened since I met <laughs> you. If you miss a meeting, I just oh, be careful about that. How, how, based on status quo, how has your experience been on Elliot Cell Road? Um, <laughs> it depends on the weekend. July 4th weekend was hellish, if I can say that. That's good. Yeah. Okay. Um, yes. And, which I kind of got that done up in some place around town with yeah. all ATVs. I didn't notice them so much as the fireworks, and the dog was very concerned about the fireworks. Yeah. There were there was a lot of ATV traffic on Ellis Hill Road on that weekend. Um, many people are, are going slow, but you know there's that handful that always ruins it for the others. Yeah. 
I didn't notice problems on North Guilford with speed. But that's well enough travel, it's more of a main road than Elliottsville is. So. Anyway, we, we shouldn't lose sight of that. And Millinocket it was, I think. I agree. Yeah, yeah it was DOT mentioned Millinocket had something. So we should be able to get a copy of what they have to do with it. Yeah. I'll from peruse the their website while we're talking. <laughs> Rick, how's your experience been in Lone Nature? Actually, I, the Lone Nature, I'm not down there all the time now, but I think it's been pretty good. Mm -hmm. It's just mostly been uh, the locals like it's supposed to be. Yeah. I haven't seen it, you know. Last year, there was a group that went, I think they were headed, and they went past the sign down into Lone Nature, but that was just the one time. You know, they're probably the lost, that's what I'm thinking. <laughs> Hasn't been that bad. I, I know it's in town here, though. Like you said, on the, I think it was the 4th of July, it looked like there was a lot of coming off the Elliottsville Road when I was traveling through. And I wonder, on Elliottsville Road, I know there's campgrounds, and people are going into Ottawa as well, and I wonder oh, yeah. if that's just, yeah, there's just more stuff down there. Yeah. Blue Valley. I'm sure they, they're looking for a place to go riding. Uh, Rich, do you have people out on Dagerstrom Road? Just a couple of people that live there. Yeah. I haven't noticed. Somebody the same many. person back. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> back. What is that? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so. Yeah, is that a Let's not, or a Sandra? Um, I'll try to, I'll start kind of some uh, research. We can just get that. a copy of it. That'd be yeah. a great first step. Yeah. I'll, I'll pursue that. Okay. Excellent. I love this answer. Yeah. Um, time capsule is still a question nobody seems to know much about. Where did I just see something that said it may or may not have been found? I was told it had been found. Really? By whom? Brian oh. Trump thinks he's got it staked out down here, but I don't think anybody's dug. Yeah, because um and I think it's on the agenda next door tonight, but obviously I can't be two places at once. So. Okay. Um yeah, I, I thought that it uh who told I don't know who told me that. Like over there. Like yeah, everybody was pretty certain that we know where it is. Why don't I check with Glenn and see if that's true? That we found Maybe or John Wentworth, or obviously not okay. you. You would have been a guest of mine if you weren't here. All right, I just I feel like it kind of fell through the cracks, and okay. we're never going to find the silly thing if we don't make an effort here. All right, moving right along. Cemetery maintenance is already on this agenda. Um, the last thing, and I have run this by. Elena already. We need to do some work to get some town committees fired up here. Mm -hmm. Unification committee could really use a couple of more members. So I'm thinking we would be well served to put out some recruitment info on that. We absolutely need a committee yeah. to do stuff like organize softball games and take care of the stuff that's in the gym and you know be involved with kids games and that sort of thing as well as an events committee which would in my mind be responsible for snowball or for summer fest or whatever else we might have coming along town so my thought was and i ran this by Elena earlier we put out a, a recruitment post anybody interested in doing this see who steps forward we already have some names of people who We've either identified or so have said, sure, I'll help. So I think we could get groups together. Yeah. But we also need to do it to make it happen because we can't just let this be haphazard or else nothing will ever happen in town anymore. Mm -hmm. So Elena's OK with that. Um, I can work with you if you like to draft copy, yeah. Yeah. whatever, and be um, helpful. Is there like an application or anything that they have to fill out? Or just how did I get on beautification? I saw something posted on the town Facebook page, I think. And raised your hand. I raised my hand. I said, <laughs> sure, I can help with that. Yeah. 
So Daniel, Daniel just asked okay. me. You know, Daniel yeah. just approached me. And asked okay. Me. All right. It can't be anything that's more involved in signing up for select board. That's yeah. literally. Yeah. Right. Well, that's what I'm thinking. <laughs> you know, if we we posted places that people are already living, like the way it's at the Facebook, like even here in the office, and even like if they come in to register their car, if there's a poster sitting there, they're yeah. standing there waiting for us anyway. So they're going to read whatever we have up there. But people with kids ought to be interested in the reference. Right, yeah. right. Um, like, likewise, the events committee. And I oh, think I if we have the right words, like advertising copy to mm -hmm. suck people in. Yeah. Then. Wasn't there a group that was interested in, um, that consisted of Jonathan Cohen and- That's right. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I haven't got a promotion. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. the, the person who was going to do it is in the- Head field hockey coach at Box Shop now. No, that's right. <laughs> but Kathy does not show sure no. in that. I mean, there are people who have yeah. said. So okay. if they don't step up, we'll. Yeah. 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 <laughs> okay. And that's all I will say for tonight because it's 6 30. Cool. <laughs> then I'll, I'll piggyback on that because for, um, for Saturday, one idea that I had was if we could set up a tent or a table or something and have uh, a board where are you actually are you gonna be around Saturday? I can be. Okay. <laughs> it just would be a good kind of meet and greet. Yeah. yeah. Um I, I'll also be around and would be good to have like a board where we can share some of the all the things that were on our priorities list and mm -hmm. also some other things and have people weigh in on stuff that they okay. think is is do the dot yeah the dot thing or the sticky note thing or whatever um just to get feedback and then okay. we'll loop them in on oh yeah you want to rec committee then sign up sheets yeah. yeah we could have a quick draft maybe okay. yeah beautification yeah i've got the dots perfect. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. So, okay perfect yeah i'll 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 be happy to take the lead on that okay and there there are a couple of canopies at the historical society i'm sure one could be set up out here okay I'm just going to be busy, I think, from 12 to 2, winning the British Army. No, I'm going to be winning the most. <laughs> and that's here. It's here, yeah, yeah. Yes. <laughs> I'm not coming no, on I'm last. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. What time are all the, the things being set up? Oh, um, stuff starts at 7 o'clock in the morning, literally. Mm -hmm. Are there flyers anywhere? Because usually yeah. I like, have a stack and okay. I can see anything. Mm -hmm. And a couple people have asked uh, uh, I will give you some general. Okay. <laughs> there's some at the general store, there's some at the post office, and there's some at Robinson. Oh, okay. Like, well, then maybe that's why not too many people have been asking. I mean, you do have the poster. Yes. That delineate, and the flyers don't do anything more than oh. that. Oh, okay. Because it was more of like a pamphlet. Yeah, but it's the schedule, and then on the back, the addresses for anybody who doesn't know where stuff is. So it's nothing okay. fancy. Well, anyway. I'll get you some. Just love me. All right, what else? On um, do we have an update from recycling? I, I was just thinking that um, Marty's been forwarding uh, emails from them. So um, apparently, uh, Municipal Review Committee um, won the the stocking force bid. Um, it had it was tied up a little there in court. It was probably in the paper. You yes, it was. about that. The judge kind of said, "Oh, gotta check on something." But it, it went through. Um, so I think the last email, because they were just um, MRC was going to talk with a couple of, of other um, operators, I believe, um, just to kind of see if they wanted to partner in this together or if MRC is going to just uh, contract with uh, operator. But it looks like um, at some point, hopefully in the next month or two or something, once they get everything up and running, we'll have our recycled. Um, I thought a bag. fair amount of monetary investment was required to get things repaired and yeah. in shape to do yeah. that. Because and where's that money there. coming from? They they were having an executive um, session meeting. I, I believe they're going to talk about that. And I didn't go to that one. I, so I'm not sure where that was. I think the last newspaper article said that they were seeking like minority investors. So yeah. maybe they were going to, so what they were going to do is go back to people who had expressed interest before but didn't want to buy it. 
entirely themselves and say how they would want to participate. It would be great to have it up and running again, but the last thing I remember reading didn't make me think that would happen anytime soon because of the I'm thinking like fall. Um, but I I don't know, we'll we'll see. They they send regular emails, it seems out as they are making progress. All right. Uh, has anybody heard from DOT on the scope that they're in? I've been no. meaning to ask you about yeah. that. No, okay, I'll follow up on that. It was supposed to be here by now. Yeah. Um, I have some code questions. We'll wait on that. And Water Street update, were you going to? Um, yes, yeah, so there was a little snag with that. Apparently, um, when the, uh, the public hearing was held, um, so they, the public hearing was um, filed with the Registry of Deeds. And then after the public hearing, um, the owner of the property was supposed to have been served with the findings. And the findings should have been also filed with the Registry of Deeds and none of that was done. Um, so we found that out at the last minute. We assumed that it was done because we knew that the other one had been recorded and stuff. Um, so I reached out to Zach and that is a, a, a legal thing. So um, I did send the notice of findings to a process server in Massachusetts. Um, there, that was a couple of weeks ago. Um, their policy is to make four attempts and then if it can't be served, then they'll send us something notarized. So I did reach back out to him and he said that it appears that the property is vacant. Um, but we've heard that before from people who have tried to bring things there. Um, so I did ask him if he'd made the four attempts yet. And I asked Zach, what do we do in the event that he can't be served? And he said that um, we would need to just post it in, in the paper for three weeks and send it by regular mail to his last known address. Um, so I'm waiting to hear back from the process server if they've made those four attempts or not. And I asked him also, please send me the notarized document saying that he can't be served if that's the case. Um, so that's where that is. And I guess when, uh, so did I say three weeks we had to run, the, run it mm -hmm. in the paper? Okay. And if he does get served, then he legally has 30 days. Um, and Zach didn't feel like we needed to have another meeting just because I said, this guy is not in the dark about it. I said, we've had multiple conversations. It's, it's not like he doesn't know and was just never notified. It just, the procedure wasn't followed. So we're just waiting on that. And as soon as all those things run themselves out, um, Mike's ready to get going. Um, Do you want me, I can just back up about the yeah. MRC thing. I just found that the last email, so I, I didn't want to misspeak on that. Um, they said uh, MRC is proceeding with discussions and working with a number of private partners to potentially share ownership and operation of the facility. This reduces the need to ask members to help with financing to restart and reopen the facility. We've had uh, very successful meetings with some who participated in the receiver sale and some who did not. Overall, we're positive about the proceedings and looking forward to the time when MRC is able to own and control the destiny of a hand in the facility. Their next uh, regular board meeting of, um, is July 27th uh, with a finance committee meeting at nine that day as well. Um, so if I'll look at my calendar, if I can attend that, um, I will. I don't know if they do a Zoom on that, but um, I should know. Great. Uh, have we heard anything new from Premium Choice about the deployment? I've seen the trucks around. Um, yeah, he was around town working today, and he said that he was going to be here pretty late today because there was, and then he said something to you about the stores. What did he say about the stores? Oh, no, that's oh, actually. That's actually. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. So, um, I don't know really anything about Premium Choice, where they're at with things, um, other than that they had called me <clears throat> a while back, uh, I think before the last meeting, and said they were ready to get going. Um, I haven't heard anything else at all from them. Okay, check in on that. And if we want to know about a, Axiom, then. <laughs> yeah, would you have a you have a contact for premium choice? Oh. I think it's I can deal. find one. Yeah, I'm sure we can look yeah. through. You guys can emails. just check, follow up with them, and just see what their timeline is. Um, you tell me what you know about Axiom, and I'll tell okay. you what I know. <laughs> okay, so he came in a couple of times today, and he 
he said something to you about the store, but he was in the gym already and he had to come back to do the bandstand. And then he said that he thinks that he found a different location that's going to work better, um, but he was waiting for some sort of approval or something similar to that. And then what did he say to you about the store? Um, just that they were kind of waffling now. Like that was a thing before and now it might not be, but um, he's hoping that it still will be. But he was thinking somewhere out here on a pole or something is a, is a really good spot. Yeah. So he's, they just, they went into the bandstand and they just went around and they just kind of snow, you know, like all out. Looking yeah. at their options, I guess. And he said that the, whatever was installed in the church, he personally would have never installed it knowing that it wasn't going to work properly and all of this other stuff. So he seems that wherever this location at, oh, right here is going to be much better. Yeah. I think they're going to, I think the store is okay. I think I have to confirm with everybody, but I, there was an issue this morning, and then I think by the afternoon, okay. I think it all got resolved. Okay. Uh, but I think here that there's a pole right outside the building that I think they, they're going to okay. try to connect mm -hmm. here to. So um, they're going to give me. I, I spoke with them at the end of the day, and just going to give me an update. Okay. Yeah. He was he was here first first thing this morning, and then he said, "I'm going to run to Waterville real quick." I was like, "No, nah, not real quick." <laughs> He's like, "I need Greenville." I was like, "Oh, okay, Waterville." <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. I get it. <laughs> what, they both water. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, all right. And then uh, last question is, can we clear around the, speed, the 25 mile per hour sign on the Willimantic, um, coming into town on the Willimantic Road? Just here, it looks like it's bamboo and stuff kind of grown, okay. grown around. What sign is it? It's the 25 mile per hour. The, uh, the Willimantic Road is all that bamboo. <clears throat> um, all those signs are all locked like it was last year. They yeah. All need to be. Yeah. All, all of them are. Okay. So basically coming this way and going that way. way. Yeah. Just take yeah. take a drive and put the weed whacker out the window or something. Okay. <laughs> uh, that's it for me. Town committee reports. I have a request that we remove the festival committee from the agenda to okay. move forward. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> Anything else for Bison Daniel? Uh, other than what we've already talked about, not really. Um, nothing new on beautification either. Yeah. So. Sounds beautiful. Deep thanks. <laughs> Old business, RHR Smith contract. Um, okay, so this is the contract between us and the auditors in order for the 2021 audit to be done. The check rack needs to be brought up to date, and I personally don't feel comfortable doing that because where he left off is still not correct, so I don't want to try to, like, so they are doing that, and yeah. I guess Marty has already talked about that, and now we have the contract that needs to be signed, and then we can schedule. <clears throat> With them and then is it just bank reconciliation that's not up to date? Yeah. It was um it was incorrect going way back. Um and they called me about it oh gosh, when was that? Was a few months ago. ago. Yeah. yeah. And they told me that um it just it wasn't right and they didn't they couldn't move forward with what they were doing and when i first came here i i made the attempt to be like okay so that the check rack doesn't fall behind and just looking at it i'm obviously not like the most well-trained person in that but i have done it several times and i was like mm, i i don't understand which he does check rack in excel and I've always done the check rack through Trio because that's where we write our checks that's, and everything yeah. through. So I think it's only because that's how he was trained to do it. It not necessarily saying that it was wrong or whatever, but lots then of people do it that way. Uh, yeah, lots of people do do it that way because they don't use Trio. And I guess Trio can be not user friendly. But yeah, I we know that. I've had good results using Trio and yeah. um, the MUD uses Trio for their check rack too. So so maybe getting it to getting it cleaned up. Yeah, so that's what that's what they're doing right, because okay. it would be much easier for every and, and if there are mistakes, having an auditor be like, okay, X Y Z versus me and then so. Mm -hmm. 
but when I first came here, I was like, eh, I don't think that is right. And the, like, I tried, I broke it all down into how he did things. And I'm like, mm, that still doesn't look right to me. And then, then you're going back a whole nother year. So it's like, <clears throat> getting it fixed. We all know what fun numbers can be. Mm. Especially when they're large numbers. Mm -hmm. <laughs> what you or I work, or me <laughs> work with. So once the um, bank rec is caught up to date, we can schedule 2021's audit. And then they said usually we do our following audit in like in November sometimes. So then we'll have both years caught. Thank you. All right, supplemental tax Blanchard. Okay. So the last name's Blanchard. I didn't really think of okay. About it when I wrote it, <laughs> and then Marty's like, "What's your?" I like it's your name. So we actually have a tree growth penalty somewhere in my stack of goodies, and the Blanchard one is actually from March, but March, as we all know, was kind of crazy, and then this got shuffled aside or whatever. So we, I gave it back to the assessor today. He redid it. It's all ready to be resigned. And then this is the tree growth penalty along with the letter. Oh, you're still very sorry, you're still one. Yeah. And then the tree growth one is, you know. Oh, we, the, oh, the front, front page. page. Oh, yeah. Okay. yeah. I got it. Okay. It's just like a current use. You can tell you have current use in any of Um, Along the same lines? Uh, I'm not real familiar with the current use. Uh, I don't know what that one. That one the there was one that was government-owned property. Yeah, the uh, the Blanchard oh. one was government-owned. Okay. Go owned, and so it had a hundred percent state of Maine exemption on it. And then when it got sold, the exemption never came off, so they weren't paying any taxes That's at all. So it is. So it is now. Something comes out of yes. current use. Yeah. Okay. All right. I think I understand what's going on here. So we all have to sign this. Yeah. How many acres was it? The that one. I'm not sure how much it The tree growth one? Yeah. Or the supplemental one. Under 10 acres. Two point four two acres. Yeah, because we were in that situation if you sell less than a certain number, I think it's ten. Yeah. You pay the penalty. Um, if your if your land is in tree growth and you go to sell some of it, yeah. if you sell, I believe it's less than ten acres, um, and you have to pay tax a penalty on that. Yes. Yeah. Okay. yeah. Cemetery section. Okay, so um, I do believe that this has been brought up at some point. But the cemetery section. Um, Marty has reached out to Chris. Um, yeah, so there had been some some talk about needing a sexton, and um, you know Chris has been doing a lot of that type of stuff anyways. Um, and so I did speak to him and, and just asked him if it might be something that he was interested in in, in doing. Um, 
And he said, well, not for nothing. And so I said, well, I, I think that's pretty much, you know, it always had been a, an unpaying you know, position. So um, I said that a lot of people felt that way, that it should be, you know, some kind of an annual stipend. I told them, you know, um, it probably would end up being around, probably um, what the code enforcement was. I, I felt like that might be something that everybody might felt feel was reasonable. Um, and I just told them it would probably be paid biannually, just like, the code enforcement and um, he said that he would be willing to consider it so you know if, if that was something that any everyone was interested in pursuing or maybe starting there and then pursuing it further if, if Chris was interested um, I would say at this point he probably knows a lot more than anybody else mm -hmm. right, um, at this time so it was presented and um, it, he's definitely open to discussing it further that's something we want to move forward with. Yeah. So if the work he's been doing over, you know, in the, in the past, that's all just part of the regular cemetery maintenance budgets? Um, well, actually, so he gets paid right now from the funeral home because he digs the holes and gotcha. stuff. So he basically, aside from the ones that have been burying them themselves, he digs them um, in the other towns that I've worked with our cemetery section will go and to the funeral or whatever it is and then kind of hang out in the back mm -hmm. until it's over with and then he'll do the rest of it, everything and it has come to my attention that we just let other people bury whoever they their mother brother whatever themselves and we will say just let us know when you did and it, they don't mm -hmm. so now we have people in our cemetery that we don't have in our books and those are kind of like permanent fixtures so I feel like that's kind of an important thing that we maintain well. Yeah. And especially now, and I feel like Chris is a good fit because he has been the one placing dead people here. So, um, and like if they get cremated, we get the certificate that they were cremated, but then they were released to their family. So when their family buries them, if they don't tell us, we have no idea. Having a sexton, when they call and say, well, what do we do? Mm -hmm. Our sexton will go and map out exactly what lot it is. That way, we don't run into, you know, they buried them. That now over here, that was not technically a spot, or that stone spot, or a walkway, or whatever it may be. Yeah. So, yeah, it's, it's kind of important. And like in the other two towns that I worked for, it was like, like the sexton was also the one that mowed and everything too. You guys have that separated out, so. It would be a little bit different, obviously, but more records manager, right? But that's important. Yeah, and management. the updating of maps and when a new plot is sold, um, the section is the one that signs off on all of that stuff. I don't believe that we have a huge call for it, but things they change. Sold. They, they do sell. I yeah. mean, since I've been here, I've probably sold five or six. Yeah, so yeah, I so mean the sexton is usually the one and then they'll write it down in the book like the last name of whoever it was and how many you know full burials will fit here, how many cremated and, and how many mm -hmm. of, of what and so I feel like that's definitely been something that's been lacking for quite some time which the cemeteries is a huge thing for every town it's just because it's it's always the last thing they think about and then and when Literally. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. So it, it kind of just gets pushed pushed to the side until they no longer can. And I feel like now we're like, oh. Well, we've been talking about you know maintenance of the cemeteries, the roads, um, and um, so a sexton would would in terms of also like the headstones, if there were any that were damaged. Um, think of that? So in the past, the select board in both towns are the ones that kind of like arranged for people to come in and have them fixed or clean right. them or whatever. The sexting can always kind of be, is involved in the process, but the select board is usually the one that has done it. Mm -hmm. I know that Garland had a company come in and um, restore almost two full cemeteries um, over the course of four years, and they look amazing. Mm -hmm. um, and then, but their sexting was, they're the ones with all the knowledge, they're the ones with all the information, so they can kind of, right. You know, do the footwork for the, the select board. Mm -hmm. You've got one all cleaned up. Yeah. I think if we put together exactly what the expectations yeah, were, right. we got yeah. together with them yeah. and really laid it out, then mm -hmm. he could say, 
I couldn't take on something of that magnitude, or I can, or so this, this is what I can, can do. Yeah. This yeah. Is, is I there, this and not this. The the money budget in the cemetery uh, line item is that uh, we haven't really used it. I mean, is that no. can we go towards a sexton and maintenance? And right. And yeah, and I don't know what the rules are for like the cemetery. There's different perpetual care funds that we have like special money in and then we have a cemetery that's also a reserve too so like what is the difference between like the perpetual care obviously yeah. and then the cemetery reserve what exactly was that designed for and then so that's yeah. a good question and, and as far and then as far as the prompt here at the beginning i mean it sounds like we're the answer is yes look pursue, the, pursue it and okay. come up with a plan and, okay perfect and then your appointment and oath. Okay, so I have two appointments and oaths. Um, you did the, uh, you voted on the appointment, but um, I failed to bring it to the meetings to be signed. So, so we just got to sign so it. So we just got to sign it. And then I did one for the GA, GA administrator. We never really talked about that, but um, I got the mail in review for the GA today, and I just wanted to do it and get it done with so that we're not in non compliance. Mm -hmm. um, so if you could sign that, so then I can send that away. There's two appointments. New business, time manager updates. So, um, that was about the book before, before I talk about that. Um, you sent me an email early in the week asking about the PSA that my husband tested for that. I talked to Brian, he says not yet, but he's working with Maine Royal Water, so they're going to try to assist us in that because in order to do the testing, you have to like completely sterilize yourself, your clothing, absolutely everything in order to get an accurate reading. And then the testing is actually outside of the state of me. So it, there's kind of a trail to do this. So he asked for assistance to make sure that we do it correctly. And he said that we have until the end of the year to do it. So this is PCAS test. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. So I did check with that and that's the update on that. And then the water street building update she did. Um, Roadside mowing is down below. Um, okay, so the only thing I have left is um, through our MMA workers comp, there is a grant, a uh, safety grant that um, I was thinking would be good for the fire department. They do things like um, safety cones that we budgeted for this year, high vis jackets, um, ladders, things like that. I spoke with the fire department this week and I asked him if they could get any pictures of like the cones that they have are using that are not good, ladder rung, whatever. So I think that that would be a good, because that would be, it's up to $3,000, so it might not cover everything that we need, but it's $3,000 yeah. out of our budget that we wouldn't need to use or could use it for something else. So. Well, and they could get more of the equipment that they need. Exactly, exactly. Yeah. So, and oh, the stop slow signs, that's included in that too. Um, so, and it's through the workers' car that we used. So, I feel like that's, mm -hmm. yeah, so it's through MMA. Elena, I know this is just like another thing on, on your radar, but um, so we put in the budget for like a grant right now for um, the fire department. Yes. So, um, what we were originally waiting for was a letter for the, their nonprofit letter. And then I think we finally got it, I do believe. I haven't heard them. You haven't heard it? Okay. So that's what we were waiting on. I guess they have mailed it several times and we are not getting it. I guess they sent it to maybe Julie Anderson's personal mailbox at some point. And I'm like, is there a way that they can FedEx it so we can track it or something? Because the fire department's like, they said that they sent it like three times. So that's another aspect of things. But um, the, the truck is like the main. Yeah. I mean, they have a lot of problems, obviously, mm -hmm. over there. But the truck, I mean, two years and not being able to use your main fire truck and not having a backup is 
is an issue. Mm -hmm. And then I guess there's a few other issues on that line, like where are we going to park said fire truck? Because new fire trucks are bigger and they will not fit in our department. Mm -hmm. So that's something that we kind of need to think about in the future and the fact that we now have a fire truck in a public works building and no place for public works. Um, a solution that we actually kind of were throwing around earlier was maybe like a portable garage for a short term thing because they also have a boat sitting outside now that mm -hmm. is now getting, you know, sun. Portable garage for fire equipment? Or well, maybe even equipment? thinking of one for the truck and one for the boat for short term and then the think, public works truck. truck because yeah. the problem with yeah. the fire truck is it's going to be full of water and it would freeze right. if it was outside. Right. And right. I believe right. the lower would so be way too be, big yeah. to fit right. in it. So as long as, um, uh, you know, I, I don't know how much trouble that truck has starting in the winter when it's really cold. I mean, we talked to you about it, obviously. Right. And it's, it's we were that, just but. bouncing ideas around because, I mean, it, it is a huge problem. And obviously, we don't have money to just build a new building there tomorrow. Dump of a big building at the dump. What is that used for? Just the sand ship? Is that what it is? What right as you're pulling in? Yeah. yeah. Is there the room in that to well, store equipment? No. And Not so the, the idea from the fire department, and this is just an idea, is to build something for down the water course yeah. down there since yeah. their stuff is down there and then they would have the base that they need. Downstairs. They really want the basement of this building. Oh, absolutely. Mm -hmm. yeah. 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 I love that. Yeah. Yeah. First of all, well, they recently changed the locks downstairs on the office building and he brought me in the invoice and I was like, so where's my key? Because <laughs> I get to be a part too. And he's like, oh, I'll have you a key. And he did, he had me a key that day. So I was like, okay, cool. And so um, they were looking for a fire department email. And I said, as long as, you know, I'm not getting kept out of the loop now that you have your own email because of this. And he's like, no, I promise. So. I'm hoping that the communication stays open there. Sometimes it's difficult, but mm -hmm. working hard. Sometimes emotions run high. Mm -hmm. They do. Uh -huh. <laughs> sure do. And I'm on the periphery, so. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So um, I'll include this in your said knowing. So that's the last thing I have that's not covered by anything going down. Cool. So. Thanks. All right, dangerous building, who's have manufacturing plan? Okay, so Kent. Yeah, so I'm going to go after <laughs> <laughs> It was on a piece of paper if they gave me when I started to be looking at it. <laughs> what? Um, that was something that Brian. Brian just kind of put it as a um, keep it on the radar. And at that time, um, he had said one of the outbuildings had collapsed. And I haven't been down myself, but from what I understand now, pretty much the yeah. whole place has collapsed. It's always collapsed all over the place. Yeah. Yeah. So normally that would be considered a dangerous building situation. And, you know, per the ordinance, you have six uh, months. Okay, to clean something up when it falls down. Yeah, um, if you have a spell over at your building, then you've got six months to get rid of it. Okay. So um, it's kind of out of sight, out of mind down there. So I think that's why it probably hasn't been brought up before. Um, but yeah, so the big question is, is this something that we want to pursue? Um, yeah, so let's take Moosehead Manufacturing out of this for a second and just talk about dangerous buildings more generally, right? So that's mm -hmm. one, that's one site I would say, yes, let's yeah. proceed. Um, there's the building on Center Street. Mm -hmm. um, you know what I'm talking about. I do. It's been, it's been under, under re renovation for 30 or 40 years. I remember at one point I, I drove by probably like a year or two ago and I was like, oh, this house, I forgot about this house. Looks like it's under renovation. And then a couple months later, I was looking at stuff on Google Street View and it looked exactly the same. And I looked at the date on the picture and it was 2011. <laughs> So that's one. Um, and then there are the two on Tinney Hill. So there's the, I forget the name, the one with the blue tarp it's on right. it. Yeah. Yeah, they cleaned up some. Yeah. I need to call them back and see when are you going to finish it because we can't have blue tarps like that. Yeah. And then there's one other, I forget. Tinney Hills? Yeah. 
I mean, there's another one right in that vicinity. Okay. Okay. Yeah, I, I'm not familiar with the the only one I'm aware of on Tenny Hill is the one with the park. Yeah. Okay. So, um, I don't know to what extent we need to incorporate this in uh, in our agendas, like on a consistent basis, mm -hmm. but but just to have updates on these open items okay. and be tracking them accordingly. Okay. Well, and like going forward, now that you know, like I know kind of what's going on a little bit, um, I can include it in what I have to update to yeah. instead of just. But yeah, yeah. For for example, if we say, so, hey, yeah, we wanna we wanna uh, move forward with whatever the next step is for Winston Manufacturing, and they have six months or whatever that timeline mm -hmm. is, we don't need to talk about it every two weeks. Right, right, right. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. Do you, do you know when? Do we know when it fell down? It's right. been a long time. I yeah. Been back to the long time. I only go back to because it was on the piece of paper. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 It, it's been more than a year. So do we have to start the six months clock ticking when somebody notifies them or is it are they six months past due at this point? Or maybe send them a letter saying it's been more than a year but we'll hold it's yeah. falling down. Yeah. I'm sure there's rules about this. So right, yeah. We'll just look into it. So these buildings at Moose have, have um asbestos. Probably. I understand. So that mitigation is going to be far more expensive than it would be to tear down a house on Water Street. Uh, yeah. Like big time. Hopefully they'll deal with it themselves though. Yeah. That'd be nice. It's part of the, that. They might. If they want to sell the property, they have to turn it out. And if they don't sell the property, we end up owning it by tax sale. And then it's our problem. Yeah. Well, <clears throat> we'll figure it out. Yeah. OK. okay. All right, roadside mowing update. Okay, so um, I again I spoke to Tyler about this earlier, but we put the um, roadside mowing up to bid in in the paper for this week, um, and I said to open bids at the next meeting, which we're also opening pile contracts as well that meeting, um, and because of that, I guess there was conversation about renting a mower and having Steve just do it as an employee. And that's also an option. I reached out to HP Fairfields or something similar to that event today for a quote on what the mower would be because Brian has said in the past, um, we have rented them for the leach fields through this company. Um, in It also says that you guys can reject or whatever, the, any bids that we do get. So we can go that other route if we choose to do that. That way we can <coughs> see what is, Cost effective. Um, plus, we haven't had any mowings at all this this year, and now it's almost the end of July. So I figured things are getting full. All right. So I figured just to get the ball rolling ahead of time, that way we can get some get some quotes. And if it is better off to just have Steve do it, then we can go that route too. I hope um, on their website it says that they'll get back to you within 72 hours or whatever. So I'm hoping by maybe tomorrow. If not, I'll call them again and see if they can give me a quote, and then I can forward that along. And certainly by the next meeting, we'll, we'll oh, absolutely. absolutely. Yeah. For sure. Any snow plow bids come in yet? No. no. People came and picked up packages. They did. Good. Yeah, that's good. They're the sharpening their pencils. The being one of them, which was kind of surprising. I saw the ad. Yeah. Yeah. The previous contract should be one of them. Well, well if he's got insured registered equipment, <laughs> yeah. that could work. Yeah. Yeah. He picked up two copies. I don't know if it was just if he makes boo-boos on the first one. Oh, and I forgot something in the Captain Ninja's update, but super quick. Um, there's something that the, the state offers. It's called special fuel and gasoline tax refund. In, this is the only town I've ever worked for that has not done it. Um, you can submit all fuel that has been purchased not for heating purposes. So all diesel, for the loader, the fire truck, mm -hmm. all that stuff. Um, you can submit to within 18 months of purchase. So we can only go back 18 months, but I am working on this. Um, I'll have to actually call Robinson's for the breakdown for the public works because the up until last week, just the public works had a account open with Robinson's that breaks it down per gallon wise. 
Um, but for diesel, I think it's 31 cents. That for so for 18 months worth of fuel, hopefully that will be a nice revenue for us yeah. this year. Let's do that. Yes. Super. All right. Sure. Perfect. 707 on the dot, one hour. Next up, we'll move into executive session for one MRS 4051 E legal matters. Thank you, gentlemen. Another for me. <laughs> <laughs> so now, oh, okay. All right. 